I would prefer us to leave the EU with a deal. I would much prefer it. I believe that it is possible even at this late stage, and I will work flat out to make it happen. So Boris Johnson is now officially the UK's Prime Minister, which means there'll be some pretty significant changes felt in the UK and around the world. Not least, Johnson's Brexit policies will fundamentally change how the UK progresses on this issue. So in this video, we're going to talk about his Brexit plan, what exactly it is, how it's going to change the UK's path forward, and what the EU think of it. Before we get to that though, I wanted to quickly ask you to consider supporting this channel. Our supporters give us funds which make it possible for us to release videos quickly on topics like this. Sometimes our videos, like the one we released a couple of days ago, are demonetized, which means we put a load of effort into them and make no money. So if you want to support the channel and the team who make the videos, then you can either donate through Patreon and get a whole bunch of monthly perks, or you can make a one-off PayPal donation. Find links to both and information about how TLDR is funded in the description below. We actually took a whole video to discuss Johnson's Brexit plan when he was still a candidate, so we're not going to dive quite that deep again. If you do want to learn about Johnson's three-stage Brexit plan, there's a link to that in the description. Instead of focusing on Johnson's plans for GATT Article 24 or for No Deal, we're going to talk about his plans of how to get a deal with the EU. That's because even Johnson, who claims to be completely fine with the idea of No Deal, still wants to try and negotiate first. I would prefer us to leave the EU with a deal. I would much prefer it. I believe that it is possible even at this late stage and I will work flat out to make it happen. But certain things need to be clear. The withdrawal agreement negotiated by my predecessor has been three times rejected by this House. Its terms are unacceptable to this Parliament and to this country. He believes the withdrawal agreement May has negotiated with the EU is completely dead. And having been rejected three times in the House of Commons, I'm not sure we can disagree with that. So Johnson sets out a new plan of how he'll deliver a successful Brexit. Johnson's renegotiation plan has four main aspects. Citizens' rights, the backstop, the divorce payment, and no deal preparations. When it comes to citizens' rights, Johnson agrees that the rights of the 3.2 million EU citizens currently living in the UK should be protected going forward. He suggested in a speech during his campaign that that section of the current withdrawal agreement, which relates to citizens' rights, should be taken out of the otherwise defunct withdrawal agreement and put into law. He even went as far as saying that these protections should have been enshrined in law from the beginning of the process. I also want therefore to repeat unequivocally our guarantee to the 3.2 million EU nationals now living and working among us. I thank them for their contribution to our society and for their patience. And I can assure them that under this government, they will have the absolute certainty of the right to live and remain. While the EU will be pleased to see their citizens' rights protected in the UK, it's not exactly the most groundbreaking or generous move. May's government promised to protect EU citizens' rights throughout the process. And with the EU set to protect the rights of UK citizens residing in the EU, it seems like the least that Johnson could do is facilitate this reciprocal arrangement. Next up is Johnson's plan for the backstop and the Northern Irish border. Now this is a super tricky issue that politicians and experts have been fighting over for a while now, and simply there's no easy solution. Brexiteers hate the backstop because it keeps the UK in the single customs territory with the EU and commits to level playing field regulations across a range of sectors, with no unilateral means of getting out. They're worried that if no trade deal is agreed, then the UK will be stuck in this backstop indefinitely, which likely means no trade deals with the US or anyone else. No country that values its independence and indeed its self-respect could agree to a treaty which signed away our economic independence and self-government as this backstop if an agreement is to be reached, it must be clearly understood that the way to the deal goes by way of the abolition of the backstop. The EU insists on the backstop because it prevents any infrastructure on the Irish border and protects the integrity of the single market. So if the backstop seems like a non-starter, how does Johnson propose healing this divide between his own party and the EU? Well, he believes that the issue of the Irish border should be removed from the withdrawal agreement altogether, and instead recommends that these issues should be settled where the questions logically belong in the context of a free trade agreement. 
If this sounds like kicking the can down the road, that's because that's basically what it is. This proposal means that the UK would still be looking for alternative arrangements in order to solve the Irish border issue. I don't want to be too critical of Johnson here because people hated that in our video earlier in the week, but he doesn't have much of a plan in this area besides delaying the issue. While that's not surprising, no one's been able to come up with a great plan so far, it's not exactly encouraging as we come into the final stage of negotiations with only 97 days to go until the October deadline. The EU agree and aren't exactly convinced by this approach. A number of officials criticise Johnson as merely reiterating the problem without providing any new solutions. They also tend to believe that what Johnson is proposing has already been ruled out. He wants to preserve the invisible border between Northern Ireland and the EU, while also removing the entirety of the UK from the Single Market and Customs Union. This quite simply isn't possible. And that's not the EU being difficult, that's just the basics of foreign trade. Without the technology needed to keep the border open, there has to be a border to protect both EU and UK economies. So ultimately, they don't see anything Johnson's proposed as a solution, and generally think that the backstop which was originally proposed is still the best way to prevent a hard border. Okay, so let's discuss Johnson's attitude to the divorce settlement. This is the approximately £39 billion payment the UK is set to pay the EU under May's withdrawal agreement. This money goes towards the current EU budget that the UK has already signed up to, and the UK's other ongoing commitments. As we discussed in our video on the topic, the UK choosing not to pay this money is a little legally questionable, and no one is entirely sure if the UK is allowed to just not pay the EU this money. That being said, Johnson is proposing exactly that. Essentially the plan is to withhold the money while a free trade agreement is being reached. The logic behind this is, if the EU think they might not get the money the UK owes them, they're more likely to cut the UK a deal and give them more of what they want in order to get the funds. Johnson's made it clear that he's willing to pay the EU if they reach a free trade deal, or if they agree to a standstill transition period. He's also clarified that he would reach separate agreements for specific issues. For example, he's happy to pay for EU civil servants' pensions and for the management of the border between Spain and UK-held Gibraltar. The EU probably aren't too scared of threats like this. Cast your mind back to 2017, when David Davis, the Brexit secretary at the time, attempted a very similar strategy. He said that he caused the row of the summer over the payments and ensured that the UK didn't have to pay back the EU unless certain conditions were met. In the end though, the talks didn't quite last the whole summer. In fact, they only lasted one morning until the UK gave in. Even if the UK were to accept a no-deal Brexit, they'd still have to reach other agreements with the EU in order to prevent major structural issues to trade between the two. In order for these deals to be made, the UK and EU need to see eye to eye. And if the UK is just reneged on paying nearly £40 billion, that might not be so easy. Essentially, the EU believe that they don't have to worry too much about this, because the UK will have to repay them if they want a good relationship with the EU post-Brexit. The final core element of Johnson's plan is to prepare for no deal. Now this isn't exactly innovative, the UK government has been preparing for no deal for a while now, but Johnson wants to take this to the next level. The logic here is similar to his plan to withhold the £39 billion divorce settlement, strengthening the UK's hand in negotiations. If the EU really believe that the UK is happy with and prepared for a no-deal Brexit, then they'll be forced to take the threat more seriously. A hard Brexit like this would hurt both sides, so the plan is to make the EU agree to a better deal for the UK to try and avoid damage on their side. Beyond just the issues that the EU have with individual elements of Johnson's plans, they have a more fundamental issue. The EU have stated on multiple occasions that they're done with negotiations and with the withdrawal agreement. According to many in the EU, they're not willing to reopen the issue of the withdrawal agreement any more times. And the agreement that May reached is the last they're willing to offer. If the EU sticks to this, it's going to make it hard for Johnson to make much progress at all. And maybe preparing for no deal might be necessary as more than just a negotiating tactic. Johnson seems to believe that the EU won't stick to their guns, and when they realise that no deal and the divorce settlement really are on the line, then they'll back down. On the other side, the EU think that once Johnson settles into number 10, his views will soften when he's faced with the true costs of a no deal. 
I feel I end every video with this same cop-out line, but it's true. With Brexit, only time will tell which way this falls. Without a strong majority in the House of Commons, it's going to be hard for Johnson to get anything done. So we'll have to wait and see if he's able to execute his plan in the way he intends. We will of course keep you updated on this and everything else related to Brexit. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you want to get notifications every time we put out a video, be sure to hit the bell icon. You can also find us and additional content across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name featured at the end of every video like these people, make sure to back us on Patreon.